because you have an appointment. Now, what happens in our hearts is that we get disappointed. We get disappointed in the way that God does certain things. We get disappointed in the people that don't help us along the way. But just because you're disappointed in people, don't jump off the ship and drown in the sea. Did you hear me? Just because people let you down, don't give up on God who never will. Just because you lost a job, don't stop trusting that God is my provider. Jehovah Jireh, that's still his name. Jehovah Rafika, he's still a healer. I'm still going to get there. I'm still going to Rome. I got an appointment. Some of the stuff that you're going through right now is getting you to the places that you ask God to take you, but you just don't like how you're getting there. So, we could preach a series on this. How many want me to preach a whole series on, on the appointment in the storm? Did you know that you have an appointment in the storm? Paul knew something in the storm that the other people didn't know. What did he know? How could you stand up and tell people after they've been through 14 days of the tempest and the billows and you know what other words for a storm? The lightning and the thunder and the breakers. How can you tell them when the winds are blowing, knocking you sideways, you know, and 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 and, and Peter's wig comes flying off in the storm? How are you gonna tell me? How are you gonna tell me in the storm to stay with the ship? When you already told me it was going to break apart. How could God call you to stay with something that is breaking? And yet it is staying with the breaking that produces the blessing. It's breaking. It's breaking. Not my boat, my heart, my heart. My heart is breaking. Did you know that the place God promises to dwell, not visit, is the broken and contrite heart? What does that mean? That means that when my heart is breaking, it is important that I abide in God's love so that I can experience His presence. In a greater measure. It may not be your boat that is broken today. It may be your heart. It may be your business. It may be, it may be the, the number in your bank account that is screaming, you are broke. All right, so I am broke. God's not. All right, so. This is how I want to preach to get people through a storm. Isn't that, isn't that what we've been saying? That, that we're in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat. And you will remember that it is not what you go through that determines where you end up. Many people went through betrayal worse than you went through, and they're not bitter. And you are. Many people were disappointed more than you were disappointed, and yet they still have strong faith. And you don't. Many people are struggling with their daily needs more than you are, and they're less worried than you are about it. It is not what I go through that determines where I end up. It's not. It's who I listen to. Paul said, You should have taken my advice. I told you. I told you to stay in the harbor. They set out to go to Rome. They got caught up in a storm. They lost their course. And this is what happens, right? You get blown off course. Oh no, uh, this was not on our, uh, our GPS. Back in the day, we had trip, uh, what was it called? Trip Tick in AAA. They didn't put this on my Trip Tick. This wasn't on my itinerary. You get blown off course, then you start freaking out, and now you're like, oh my God, I was going to retire in 12 years, but now I see this situation. When you get blown off course, you have got to decide at that point, who will I listen to and what will I guide by? 
Who will I listen to? What will I guide by? Now, these are the questions that you must answer in this crisis of your life. This, this, is the, this is the heart of what God is asking today. Who will you listen to, and what will you guide by? Paul said, this is not a good time to sail, and they sailed anyway. Paul said, we ought to stay here in this harbor for a little while. The reason they didn't want to stay in the harbor when Paul told them to stay is because it says it was undesirable to winter there. So rather than stay in a place they didn't like, they sailed into something that would destroy them. Rather than stay in a place that they didn't like, they sailed into something that would destroy them. See, it's not the first storm that you have to worry about. The first storm is the storm that you can't control. It started raining Friday here in Charlotte. It looked like God got sick of everybody. And I was like, oh, the, the governor let off the stay at home order, and at the same time, this storm comes out of nowhere. And I'm like, Lord, are you speaking? I'll stay inside. I'm sorry, Lord. Oh, God, I'm I know what to do. Out of nowhere, storms are like that. One text message can change the next three years of your life in 80 characters. Out of nowhere. That's the first storm, the one you can't control. And you can't do anything about the, the, the current crossing, the current and the stormy conditions. I mean, some storms are just seasonal. Some storms can't be avoided. Some storms, I mean, I can't control what happens in China, or I can't even control what somebody does in Michigan. I can't, I can't control certain things. But God said to tell you, don't create a second storm by your decisions. See, you can ask God to protect you in the first storm. God, I don't know what to do. You do. God, I can't do anything about this. You can. But what a lot of us have been doing in this season of uncertainty, we have been creating second storms that are worse than the first. So let me break this down all the way like I'm, like I'm cutting up some filet mignon where a two-year-old can eat it. This is, a, this is a good word for anybody who you've been, you've been dealing with depression, but you've been, you've been drinking to get through it. Now, depression is something that happens to a lot of us. I mean, I don't know anybody who hasn't had a season of darkness in their life, but if I try to drive out darkness with darkness, and I depend on something in the darkness that is going to make me addicted to something even when the light comes up, the second storm is worse than the first. I have to be really careful. Like, If my kids do something that makes me mad… I said I wouldn't preach a parenting sermon, but here's a little technique that I've learned. Don't let your response be a bad example for the behavior you're trying to correct. Stop screaming! I think this is contradictory. I think my kids are confused right now. Now, now a lot of us are dealing with loneliness right now in this season. That's a storm that you can't always control. But if you run to places in the storm that are more dangerous than the storm itself, how many times have you, have you left a place that you didn't like? Some of y'all left a church you didn't like. And the problem is, you can't change if you never stay. Staying power. Staying power. Paul was a church planter. Anything you plant is only as good as the roots. Starting power without staying power. Oh man, I'm, I'm excited about this quarantine. I'm excited. I've got time to spend with the Lord now. You and the Lord got lonely. <laughs> and now, I don't know who this is for, but I'm going to say it because I feel like it's by the Spirit of God. Don't run to a relationship to solve loneliness. 
that is a compromise of your character, the second storm might be worse than the first. Don't, don't run to something because you're lonely that is, ultimately going to, that is ultimately going to put you in a condition where you end up like the, the sailors in verse 20. We have no hope. We have no hope. See, because what they were guiding by went away. I don't know if you saw this in verse 20. I'd love it if we could put it back on the screen, please. Acts 27, 20. Because I, I think this is where it gets tricky to steer. You know, as long as you kind of have a reference point to know what's normal or what's good or how much time, these things really help in life. But in verse 20, I felt it was relevant to our situation. He said, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging. Now, the storm could rage and they could keep believing, but when the stars disappeared, they lost hope. When what you were guiding by goes away and every day just looks the same and feels the same. Now I get the feeling like this is endless. Now I get the feeling like maybe these chains are never going to break. This storm is never going to cease. They lost hope. And we know they lost hope because Luke says they lost hope. And the only way Luke could know they lost hope is because they must have been saying there's no hope. I mean, come on. It's not like hope is something that you can see on someone's forehead. How's your hope? You know, there's no meter for that. It's not a video game. You don't have a little power bar, right? They must have been saying, it's, it's hopeless. They must have been saying that. Paul stands up and he decides that what you go through doesn't determine where you end up. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. Who you listen to determines where you end up. Because I think right now, you are walking through a valley between two voices. One is wisdom, one is worry. One is gratitude, one is grumbling. One is blame, one is faith. Now wait, Pastor Steve. Wait, Pastor Stephen with a PH. Wait, wait a minute. The opposite of faith is doubt. No, 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 no. Doubt doesn't keep you from having faith. Doubt gives you something to have faith for. But blame will block faith every time. Blame will always block faith. So Paul, watch him shift. He's like, y'all still listen to me. But if I blame you, I can't trust God. If I blame you, it is going to block me from receiving what I need from God in this moment. So you should have listened to me. We could have avoided this. How many know and will be honest to say, there are some storms I went through in my life that I could have avoided? Come on, point your fingers up to the air like this. It could have been avoided. It could have been avoided. I mean, some of the things in my life that I blamed on the devil were really a decision. They both start with the letter D, but some storms can be avoided. Ask Jonah. Ask Jonah if some storms can be avoided. The only reason Jonah went through a storm is because he had an appointment. God said, I'd rather take you to us through a storm. I'd rather take you through a hard time than have you waste your life in the wrong place. Now we gotta get you there. If I have to send a storm to get you there, if I have to shut it down to get you there, if I have to remove people and comfort to get you there, you're gonna get there. If you listen to the right voice. Paul stood up and said, I hear you talking about how there's no hope, and I hear you talking about how it's going to get worse, and I hear you talking about how it's just this and it's just that, and I hear Democrats talking, and I hear Republicans talking, and I hear people using this for a political purpose, and I hear all this, but let me tell you, I have an appointment. As a matter of fact, last night I had an appointment. I didn't see it on my calendar. It was off the books. Paul said, last night an angel, an angel, 
an angel. Come on, I have an appointment with an angel. With an angel. I got angels all around me protecting me and keeping me. I got angels on my side. I've got glory out ahead. I got angels. I'm here because my angels said. You have an appointment with an angel, and you got an angel telling you right now you're going to make it. In fact, you're going to be better. Y'all ignore my button popped open in my shirt. I'm trying to bench press the Word of God today. It's getting rough up here. But tell somebody I got an angel. It's all right. It's all right. I got an angel. I got an angel. I got an angel. Now, who are you going to listen to? Your angel or your enemy? My angel said I'm going to make it. My angel said I'm right on time. My angel said it's working for my… I got staying power. I got staying power. I love what the angel said to Paul. You can't die in this storm. You have an appointment in Rome. You have to stand trial in Caesar. Can I give you the good news? You're not going to die in this trial. Can I give you the bad news? You got a bigger one ahead. Greater things, bigger storms, better stories. I got an angel. I, I got an appointment. So, so Paul's like, oh, I can't die. Did you, did you ever watch a TV show and you knew? I remember we started watching that zombie show back before that looked just like the news. What was it called? The Walking Dead. <laughs> and the trailer used to come on. Don't send me a thing about the Word of God in The Walking Dead. It's in the Bible, The Walking Dead. Third day, Jesus Christ, Lazarus, all of us, all in there. Same stuff. All right? Edit this out. <laughs> but, but I saw the trailer, and I saw that the same guy that was in the first episode, he was still in it, because we watched it later, but I saw that he was still in it in the current season, so it took some of the suspense out of the first season, the second season, the third season, the fourth season, the fifth season. Now, when you have a word from God concerning your life, and it could be simple. He said he would never leave me nor forsake me. So if he's going to stay with me, then whatever happens in this storm, I already saw, I already saw season six. They can't kill Rick. It doesn't matter how many walkers. They can't kill him. He's going to… I saw the season finale. I got the victory. I got the… I got it. I got it. I got staying power. I got the Holy Ghost. I wish we could high-five our neighbors, but tell somebody I'm in the season finale. Staying power. Staying power. That's what we're celebrating today. Not that we avoided the storm, but that we stayed in the storm. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.